and we back 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 a hey, chapter 1121 the new one piece chapter i'm here to talk about it let's talk about it. so first thing first started off the chapter the ebb and flow of the ages some shit like that i couldn't find anything that's required of a roll credit because it didn't mention it in the in the whole like in the whole chapter itself but hey that's the title the chapter starts off where we left off when it comes to garcia attacking the giants on the giant ship pretty much they are they understood in the fact that this nigga had poison and shit like that because you know if we don't know he also has poisonous like stingers and shit. so the giants are blocking and everything and then we see a completely confused luffy like he's seeing bonnie kind of tweaking out real quick like he's not looking at this like you good fam? anyways luffy winds up a punch try to punch garcia and he actually punched garcia but garcia blocked it and as you can see down at the bottom here she's wheezing and wheezing me maybe maybe insinuating that she's at her limit who knows but luffy keeps cheering him cheering her on and garcia is tweaking the fuck out right Phasing off of that little battle, we continue off of Vegapunk yapping about the secrets of the world. How the ancient weapon that was used to sink the worst continents, they're still here, they're still around about. It's just that it hasn't been used a lot, apparently. Which, you know, it's a fucking lie. This panel, this whole panel intrigues me a lot. Specifically because of him. Because Vegapunk continues to say, those those with rare and unique racial ancestries are relentlessly persecuted as slaughtered today and then we get flashbacks of these two where one of them is a buccaneer but then this panel intrigues me a lot because this is whitebeard talking to marco at a den den mush now my immediate reaction to whitebeard being in this chapter or being in this page i thought this was insinuating that it is slightly confirmed that he's a buccaneer and the possibility can still be the case but the thing that kind of makes me not double down on it is this is this subtitle right here where he's talking about at a distant past that back then there was a kingdom of gods up there he's obviously talking about the red line which would then therefore lead to the lunarians and if that's why he's here then i guess it doesn't technically confirm that he's a buccaneer but hey we don't know i'm still hoping on the belief system that he is in fact at least half bloodline to the buccaneers oh yeah and then they mentioned about you know the three eye tribe right here going back to the fight with julie bonnie and luffy versus jay garcia long story short julie bonnie had a temper tantrum thinking of all the times that Ginny and uh, Kuma has been protecting her and basically saying that she owes them a lot. And then we now see a wind up punch between Luffy and Bonnie, a liberal Nika punch. As basic as that shit is, that's, that's what it is. The only thing that's interesting here is that while Luffy is just giving like gear five hockey Gatlin fist, she actually pull out an elephant gun the same thing that she did in the last chapter when luffy was a balloon and basically team rocket um marcus mars and then my man out here getting fucking rocked like fucking holes through everywhere got swiss cheese as fuck which just goes to show that not every gorse has kaido level durability i'm not saying he doesn't have any type of durability nonetheless because obviously that and he has a healing factor to save his ass is just that he's not kaido level durable at least not him at least. also quick note who's gonna save him because i might be blind but i can see well enough that that's water and he's going straight in that bitch so who's gonna save garcia the giants cheering she crying he's laughing and is that kuma smiling is kuma finally having emotions next page we look up to the sky and one of the giants uh i think it's um dory or maybe brogy i can't tell but one of them look up in the sky and realizes that the ship the sunny go is up there and he notified that to luffy 
Usopp screaming like a bitch, chopper on Jinbei's head. Jinbei tried to steer this bitch in midair, which is, I mean, if he pulls it off, then that's swag as fuck. And then Zoro's just being Zoro. Then we come down here, Vegapunk is still yapping. The closets of the truth, a coincidence? Or did Roger set, set this all in motion? I don't think it's a coincidence. I think he just set that bitch up. Like, if he knew he was about to die, then he want to make this as fun as possible. Next page, we have a flashback of what, what he said back in episode one. Rayleigh out here just getting wasted or some shit. These are pirates from Pirate Island. And when I came down here, that's when my shit started losing. I'm starting losing marbles because right here we have Pirate Island. And to my left right here, I'm seeing the red hair pirate ships. Not only we see the red hair pirate ships, we also officially have the name for the red hair pirate ship. It's the Red Force. As basic as it sounds, hey, sometimes simplicity is key. When I first saw this, I thought he was heading his way. I thought he was already at Pirate Island. Like I thought he was here in like the near vicinity of it. But we come to find out later down the line, it's not the case. Why? Because the next page we're now talking about where the Buggy Island, the Buggy Pirates and um, Crocodile and Mihawk is just right here just being fucking him. So technically he's, Red Hair is not at Hachinosu. They, they're just, uh, Vegapunk is just given, or no, not Vegapunk, but we're just given a wide perspective of what the Yonkos are doing, what the other Yonkos are up to right now. And not only the Yonkos, also the Navy headquarters too. Also, look how disgusting Crocodile is. And Mihawk is like, bro, can we just not just chill, bro? Like, I'm, I'm trying to not get my ass beat by Shanks right now. We come down here. And we we get another uh, dialogue. The fate of this world will, will will be decided by whoever finds it. Obviously, the one. And then we get this nasty shot of the four Yonkos, bitch ass Akaino over there, fucking dragon, whoever the fuck this guy is, Emu, Sabo, Kuzan, Figurling Garcia, and somehow they slide this nigga in. They slide my boy in. My boy is officially getting love. Let's get it. And make sure you subscribe to my YouTube channel for any further content.